Tonight, 12 more reported police officer suicides all across the country. That's just in the last month since our initial report bringing awareness. More cops are dying from suicide than in the line of duty. NBC 10 Boston investigator Karen Hensel takes it to a deeper level tonight as she sits down one on one with a longtime Boston cop in his first interview. Karen. Now, Phil and Shannon, he has a powerful story, a struggle, one that few would be willing to ever share, but he talks for the first time exclusively with NBC 10 Boston for every cop who is still serving and struggling in secrecy. I became a police officer in uh, March 30th, 1983. Sergeant Brian Fleming a tough Boston cop. At some point I got involved in drugs. On the SWAT team, the motorcycle unit. I took a gun out and I put it to my head. 32 years in uniform. My finger on the trigger and I wanted to die. Fleming had battled years of addiction. About a month later, uh, I overdosed on drugs and alcohol and uh, came pretty close to dying. And that was the end for me. Stressed and in need, he found little support. They called the stress unit at the time, came and kind of coached me and sent me away and I came back and uh, I ultimately got fired from the job. In losing, he found a win and eventually a new path. I ended up back at that SWAT motorcycle unit as a supervisor. Thank God I was sober, but I had had enough of the John Wayne stuff. John Wayne, where cops don't ask for help. Brian Fleming and Tommy Femilari, both retired Boston cops, now run peer support services for all police. Cops in need can reach out anonymously. With cops, if we come forward, we lose our gun, we lose our job, we lose the credibility among other peers. This is a way that can help it without me even knowing who they are. Peer support officers undergo a minimum three-day training. All is kept confidential. But a bill making it a law to keep peer support confidential for all first responders is stalled at the State House, awaiting a third reading in the House. Why? It's unclear, since 36 state reps and police unions are backing it. NBC Boston investigators question Massachusetts State Representative Theodore Speliotis, who confirmed his committee is seriously looking at it. My husband, Stephen, died by suicide May 23rd, 2017. Blue Help, based in Worcester, tracks officer suicide nationwide. On all these days, an officer died. The deadliest day in 2017, October 20th. Five officer suicides that day. We need cops to be able to go get help without any fear of reprisal. Besides peer counseling offered by some departments, there's a self-check quiz officers can take online to determine risk of suicide. Fleming remembers one of the first to take the test. This guy was suicidal, homicidal, drinking alcoholically, he had two tours in Iraq. He walked in my office, and what do you think I saw? 28-year-old, fit as a fiddle, looks like a million bucks, and if it wasn't for that test, I would not know what was going on inside that guy's head. Back to that night for Brian Fleming with the gun to his head. I put it down, I picked it up again, I picked it down, picked it up again. How many times did you get that close to suicide? Myself? Mm -hmm. That's the closest, but thought about it many times, you know, uh, over the years. The dangers from the street churning into their own demons. Over here, you don't want to say anything because the cop's going to lose his gun or his job if you say something about something that's going on. But over here, he's going to be in a casket. As peer support director Fleming oversaw the largest mental health intervention in Boston PD history after the Boston Marathon bombing, seeing over 600 officers within days. That's incredible, Karen. And we know that when we had the marathon bombing, New York came and helped. So how does it work with other departments? Yeah, so officers from another department would actually come in and do the peer support. So, for example, if there's been a shooting, they would have officers who've been through a shooting actually talk to those officers and do the debriefing. And in Boston, for the Boston PD, those mandatory briefings they have to all attend that's help takes away part of the stigma if you are struggling please contact us here at NBCBoston.com we have a lot of information there you can also contact Brian Fleming directly I check and nearly every day that number is going up so it's important Awful. Karen thank you so much and again if you have a tip as Karen mentioned you can get it to the NBC 10 Boston investigators you can call 833 NBC tips